It starts with you. Understand this. When I take your child into one of those rooms and I spend all day testing them, that's all I have is test data. I never lived with that child. I didn't carry that child. I didn't raise that child. So I'm saying that to say that even with all my fancy degrees, what you think about your child is more important than what I think. Are y'all following me? Now, you're not going to hear that from another psychologist ever, but it's the truth. And the reason why you're not going to hear that from another psychologist is because America is dictatorship by college degree. Dictatorship by college degree. So because I have more degrees than you, I automatically assume that I know more about the child that you birthed. So the first thing we want to do today is take the power away from the school in determining whether or not something is wrong with your child. And you do that by saying what? If you don't agree, you say it. No, you can't have permission. I don't think there's anything wrong with my child. Are y'all following me? Yes. I need to make a correction. If you say, I don't think there's anything wrong with my child, you're leaving a little gap. And you're leaving a gap for the school officials to try to convince you that maybe it is because you're thinking, but you're not sure. Are y'all following me? So your response isn't, I think my child is okay. Your response is, I know he's okay and don't need special education. Are y'all following me? If you give them the power to determine what's wrong with your child, you are now giving white supremacy the opportunity to function and destroy. Don't give them the opportunity to function and destroy. Under special ed law, which is federal, the public school cannot make you put your child in special education. They cannot make you test. So you know what that means? Of the two million black children in special ed today, everyone got there because one of you here pulled out an ink pen and signed your name. Are y'all following me? So when you talk to me about my kid in special ed, I automatically know that you was part of the problem because they couldn't have done it without your John Hancock. Is everybody with me? So the first question is, do you believe it? If you don't believe it, the buck stops there. Nothing's wrong with my son, you're not tested. Now some of y'all are going to say, well what if you need a little bit of help? Then request the help from the teacher. Request the help from the principal. And we know that your child's public school got hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, in special academic help money. But because you never asked for it, they spend that on padding their teachers' paychecks and getting new uniforms for the basketball team and getting the field run over for the football team. Because at the end of the year, could you believe that a lot of your principals have the audacity to come in for the end of the year meeting saying what to the superintendent? We got money left over. You mean to tell me half the kids in your school can't read on grade level, but you got money left over? How is that? Because they're not using the money how it's supposed to be spent. What are three areas of money that you can tap into to get your child the extra math tutoring, the extra writing tutoring, the extra reading tutoring? The first one is no child left behind money. No child left behind money. Okay? Every school gets some of that. What's another pot of money that they got where they can help your child without putting them in special education? It's called Title I money, which is the most, what I want to say, it is the most unfairly used money in public aid. Title I money. You know what Title I is? That's money that was started by Lyndon Baines Johnson in 1965, the Elementary and Secondary Schools Act. They said, we're going to help all the black kids after integration. And we're going to help all the black kids after integration by sending millions of dollars to all the inner city school districts. So for the working class and poor parents, they go money to improve those kids' math. They go money to improve those kids' writing. But black parents, if you don't ask for it, you're not going to get it. In other words, if the principal came to me and said, can I test your son? I think he has a reading disability. I'm going to say, no, you cannot test him, number one, because he doesn't have a reading disability. But he does have a reading delay. Are y'all following me? White supremacy is all about the words you use. A disability is not a delay. When you say your son is reading disabled, you're saying he cannot learn unless he's going to special ed. 
that if you believe, he cannot learn unless he goes to special ed, send him. But 95% of the children I test who look like us don't have reading disabilities, math disabilities. They have reading delays because they've never been taught in the first game place. Are y'all following me? So when they ask me, can they test my son? No, you can't because it's not a disability. It's a delay. And the reason it's a delay is because he's in the third grade. And his second grade teacher taught him absolutely nothing. His first grade teacher suspended him more days than it was school. So my son was home three days every month, and you trying to tell me he got a disability. Any child that does not receive consistent instruction will look LD. Are y'all following me? So if you are a parent of a child who's constantly being suspended, you should never consent to a special ed body. You know why? Because if your child is a discipline problem and he's being constantly suspended, sooner or later, there's going to be a gap between him and his peers. And the only reason why they want to put him in special ed in the first place is to get him the hell away from the teacher who can't stand him. Are y'all following me? In other words, let me ask you a question. If my son is being suspended three days out of every month, which means you're trying to keep him out of school as much as you can, why would you turn around and then try to help him? Are y'all following me? See, when y'all walk into the school building, some of y'all get brain dead. And y'all let the principal think for you. You let the teacher think for you. You don't let nobody think for you. And when you go to a meeting, never go by yourself because you're dealing with the mafia. When you go to a school meeting, never go by yourself. I work in schools. I'm telling you how they operate. The stronger the parent, the more independent the parent, the more intelligent the parent, the more staff are sent to the meeting to intimidate you with numbers. Or oh, y'all follow me? So if you got a parent who's not a good advocate for their child, who signed anything they ask them to sign, they might only send two people to meet with you. Because you easy. That's an easy nigga, brother. But if you're a parent who ain't born for anything out of somebody's mouth, and you got to show me the data, they send a whole mob in the meeting. They're going to surround you with the reading specialist, the math specialist, assistant principal, being the students, school psychologist. Why? To make you think just because they have a degree that you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. And some of y'all fall for it every day. Wow. But when I'm in meetings with Jewish parents, and when I'm in meetings with Chinese American parents, they don't give a damn how many people you sit in here. I said my child ain't slow. That's the end of it. Y'all have to have the same resolve. Y'all have to have the same resolve. Now, one of the places where we're messing up black folks is y'all not organized. Every school should have an independent black parents association that is not under the leadership or funding of the local school district. First of all, every school district in America has what, y'all? They have a home school association. Nothing wrong with belonging to the home school association. Problem is the home school association is like the NAACP or the Urban League. Funded by white folks to control how much you do. So if you belong to the home school association and you don't have an independent association of your own, you ain't getting nothing done. What if you don't meet with the principal every week? Y'all supposed to be meeting by yourself. The principal has a conflict of interest. What do I mean when I say your child's school principal has a conflict of interest, even if they black? Because on the one hand, I got a hundred lazy teachers who don't want to teach these black children. On the other hand, I got 200 black parents who said my kids ain't learning. So how can we possibly get along when these teachers can get me fired today and tomorrow if I start cracking down on them the way that I want to crack down? So the principal will have to choose sides because guess what? It's a conflict of interest. And when they choose sides, who do they choose? Yours? They side with those teachers. And they side with the teachers because they are afraid of the repercussions that can come from the teachers' union if they make those teachers too uncomfortable. I'll come to you in a second. Every school has a teacher mafia. Do you know what that is? That's five teachers. Mostly European, but they can be a Negro every once in a while. They've been there since you were in that school. Older than your grandmother. And they got so much power that they don't have to do anything, but they can control who works there, including the principal. Are y'all following me? 
And this is why a lot of good black principals get run out of schools where they were making a difference. You say, why did they let her go? Things were getting better. Why did they let her go? Things were getting better. Because the mafia, which is only five teachers, said we don't want him. <laughs> 